Hey everyone, in this video we're going to discuss how we can use React Transition Group to improve the transitions in our application. React Transition Group hooks into lifecycle methods such as when the component is about to mount, when it is mounted, when it's about to exit. So it's quite powerful to track when we want to transition in and when we want to transition out our components. You can add React Transition Group using NPM or Yarn. In our case we're going to be using CodePen. So we're going to have it added to the JavaScript dependencies. When it is installed, it offers you four components, which are listed here on the top. The component we will be using today is the transition component. You also have CSS transition, which behaves like the transition component, except you use CSS. You have transition group, which wraps around multiple instances of the transition or the CSS transition component. You have switch transition also, which is uh, it's inspired by Vue transition modes if you ever use them. It's documented quite well here and also have a link to a uh, code sandbox that you can use. Hey, are you tired of recreating bugs in your React apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a React monitoring solution that helps you track Redux state, automatically surface JavaScript errors, and monitor slow network requests in component load times. Enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop on over to uh, CodePen. We're gonna go through the sample application I've created, and then we're gonna use the transition component to uh, improve the flow of the application. Hey, so here in our uh, CodePen, we can see we have our like Pokemon-like application. This is where the images would uh, go for your Pokemon also. Uh, let's go through the dependencies we have first. So we have the basic two React dependencies you need. I also have the React Transition Group uh, dependency and I have the GreenSock dependency. If you watch that in my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan of GreenSock. So we're going to use it here to help us create our transition. The application is quite basic. When you click on a Pokemon, it brings up a de more detail about that Pokemon. Uh, let's go through each panel. HTML panel, as as you would expect, React with a React application is quite simple. We have a lot of flexbox and CSS grid as well, just to line things up. And then here we are using hooks from React, so we're using use state and use effect. So we have our Pokemon list. This is all the guys you can see here. Down here then we have our Pokemon data, set data, is toggle data, set toggle, is toggle data is when you click here, so that means that toggle is true. Uh, then we have, we're making a list here. So this is creating the list. And this here is the Pokemon detail component. So we will be wrapping our transition component. Instead of this div here, we're gonna have the transition component. And this is going to handle the moving in and out of the component. Because you can see now it doesn't look too good because it's just kind of like popping up onto the screen. So our objective here using the transition component is to slide it in, when, in, in from the right when it comes into view. And when you click the back button here to slide it back out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start using the transition component. Before we move on to the next part of the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to the sponsors of this video at LogRocket. LogRocket is the front-end application monitoring solution that allows you to see why your bugs are happening. And not just that the bugs are happening, but you get to experience them just like your users do. This is so powerful. I know as many years as a web developer that when bugs happen in any my application, most of the time I didn't even know as users wouldn't tell you. And even if they did go to the effort of telling you, I still would lack context to truly know what caused the bug. But you do not have to worry about this anymore. Thanks to LogRocket, you can see the state of the application at the time the bug occurred. You can even go as far as to see the Redux store. This will save you so much time, so many headaches, and it, it will just help you sleep much better at night. If you like 14 days free of LogRocket, you can click on the link in the top right hand corner of this video. So uh, important in uh, CodePen is a little bit different from like a Node.js application. So I'm just going to take you through how you normally would do it. So you do, sorry, you do import, you type in transition, and then you do from react. Uh, oh. So you do this. But uh, since we're using since we're using CodePen, it's just a little bit different. You can probably see above how we do it. So this time we do const, we do transition, 
and then you do equals so your destruction from a big object here called react transition group and the next thing we need to do then is we'll head down to our div that we're hiding our panel in we will remove this div and instead we will put in our transition component okay so let's do this pop this guy in we just copy this then and put it here and type delete these okay so as you expect, nothing's gonna really work. Now, as a heads up as well, if you make any typos while they're doing this, React with uh, CodePen will give you this kind of like screen of death. So if, if you run into any issues, the complete CodePen will be listed also. So the first thing we need to do is set a timeout prop on our, our component. The timeout prop basically says, how long will, um, how long will this uh, transition last? Then we do mount on enter. This means that when the component comes into view, you want to mount it. And then same as we do on mount on exit also. And then the big prop is the in prop. And this is the, the, like deciding whether it should be shown or not. And for this guy, we use is toggle data, which is the variable that we'd set in our state, if you remember. This guy here, whether we should show our component or not. I'm just going to save this because Copen now does that auto formatting. It does auto formatting if you don't make any typos. So it does auto format like this. Okay. The next thing we will do is add an event listener. This is what we want our component to do when it's about to uh, when it's about to exit. This takes in a function like this. The function takes in two arguments node the node is what your transition which in our case is our is our pokemon detail component and this also takes in a done a done value which will tell us when the transition is done which is really handy to pass to tween max so then you want to do tween max dot two and with tween max we're going to say what do i want to target i want to target my node how long do i want it to be we want it to be 500 milliseconds and then you pass in an object with the with the values of where you want it to end up. So we do this. And then we say if is toggle data. So if toggle data is true, we'll set our x to zero. Else we want the x to be minus one hundred. And then we want to use auto alpha. This is something that I just learned while I was making this video. Auto alpha will take care of hiding the setting the visibility of a component to like hidden or shown. It's really, really handy. I, I recommend checking out in the docs, but um, for me, once I knew that I was handling the visibility of a component, I was happy enough to use it. It's really, really good. And then we have on complete, and you probably guess what we want to pass that as the value. The done. Right now. We have our exit done. So we actually do not have our exit done. I made a bit of a typo. Instead of add event listener, which I'm so used to typing in JavaScript, it should be add end listener. So this instead, let's save once more. And now we click on Bulbasaur. You see that? It's fading out to the left and it's uh it's fading so the opacity is going down and it's also transitioning the X, the X property here. Then now we need something for when it comes into when it comes into view. So we will be using the on entering prop. So we'll just do on entering again you're gonna pass this in a function. This time we actually don't need to pass it to done prop and just give it node and then with the node we can just do tween max and this time we're going to do that from two from two is like above we can pass in two objects so the starting point and the ending point so we pass in oh sorry we pass in our node how long once more 0 0.5 which is 500 milliseconds pass in our first object so we just do x will be minus 100. So this is when the transition is starting onto the start from position minus 100. And then we do the same thing here with the uh, auto alpha, but we swap these guys because 
This is the opposite as what we want from above. And then two is where we want the object to end up. And just do x0. We can save this guy. Make sure I have no typos. Let that refresh. And that then works on all of them, which is uh, quite nice. The next thing we're going to handle then, which is not going to do with the transition, because the transition is done now. But uh, when they click out here, we want to close our component here rather than a change like this, which is a bit of a bad use experience. So we want to create an overlay. So an overlay is when this is clicked, we want something out here that uh, would pick up a click and then close this guy rather than switching to another Pokemon. Uh, first thing we want to do is add in some CSS for overlay. You can probably get this code online, but what I normally do is position absolute you want to put it as display block you want to set it left zero you want to do top zero you want the width obviously to be a hundred percent and you want the same for your height uh do i have it oh, no i don't and then you want to set your z index to 989 and you're saying oh sorry 998 is a pod why 998 because you want it to be less you want it to be less than this guy you don't want this to close when they click in you don't want this to close when they click say here for example and finally we just set a cursor default because as you can see when we when you go over these guys the cursor might change you want it to stay the same so back in our javascript we're going to add in a span here it can be a span because uh, we have display block hey it's me again do you hate wasting time recreating bugs in your apps if so click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of log rocket log rocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug issues faster identify performance problems and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video. Now we're gonna actually add an on click to this guy. And what it will do is when it's clicked, it will set toggle. I remember toggle is what we use to bring in and out our Pokemon Digital component to false. I'm just gonna do this, sorry. And then, then what we want to do now is Last name. So we only want the overlay to be shown when is toggle data is true. So we're going to do is toggle data. Ampersand, ampersand. So then if this is true, then do this. And what we're saying is put an overlay. So class name equals if this is true, class name is overlay. If it's not true, nothing's going to be there. And then we can do a nice style here as well. This will handle the this if it should be display block or display none so display is toggle data uh, you want it to be block if it's toggle else you want it to be none there you go um yeah so you don't really need to probably display block here but it's nice if someone's coming quickly through your code they can see that it should be display block when it's being used so just going to save this and now we're going to click on up. We're going to click on our Pokemon. Everything's working the same. And you see now, when you uh, when you click inside here, it's fine. And click outside here, it is done. So that is our application now complete. So I'm just going to go through everything again before we finish up. Remember, we're using the transition component. Uh, the two big props we're using is add edit listener and on entering. I get, uh, if you want to learn more about auto alpha, you can go to the green sock docs, but this is what would handle the visibility and opacity of a component. You can see it's fading in and it's fading out. And that is because of auto alpha. Uh, then down here, we're using the overlay to handle when there's a click outside. And then we have our Pokemon detail component. That is basically everything you need to know to get started using transitions in your application. I'd recommend heading over to the React Transition Group docs and trying out these other components. Transition Group is very, very good. So I recommend having some fun with that. I hope you learned something today. 
If you have any questions, leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks very much for listening and have a great day.